Hi everybody and welcome to another Lost Lake Fly Fly Club fly tying tutorial. Um, for this tutorial I'm going to be tying one of my favourite river uh, shrimp patterns um, but it does work very well in, in um, still waters as well um, so there's no reason why it's just a river pattern. Um, I call it the itching shrimp. Um, it's taken quite a few um, fish for me over the last couple of seasons on the river itching and the river meon. Um, but um, it is definitely one to have in the box. So um, here we go. So I'm going to start off. Um, I've got um, a fulling mill uh, check nymph hook, the uh, 5065, um, and I'm going to put on a lead underbody to give it some give it some mass. So I'm going to put about 15 turns of lead. So uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Just going to compress them. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Now you can put as much or as little as you like on, to be fair. Uh, it depends on how heavy you want it to be. Uh, but I want this one to get down quite quickly into the target zone um, when I'm looking at a group of fish. So um, for this particular fly, again, I'm going to use um, red um, Semperfly Spider Silk. Um, 12 volt um, and I'm going to start right up at the eye by here and I'm going to lay on a foundation of tying thread and a little trick here I'm just going to push the lead up so it butts into where my tying thread finishes and then I'm going to take my tag end and I'm going to pull it across the lead and then I'm going to use that to guide my um, my tying thread in between the coils of the wire and it stops it from slipping. I tend not to use um, super glue and things like that um, purely because I end up super gluing my own fingers to, to everything. Um, so um, it's my own preference. So I'm just going to continue down around the bend, not too far, but far enough. And I'm just going to work my way all the way back up again. That's it. There we go. All the way back up, up to the eye. And then I can remove the waist tag end. So we've got the main part of our underbody all set with a nice base thread um, here as well. So I like to put feelers on my on my shrimp patterns. So I'm just going to prepare a um, partridge, grey partridge feather here. Um, I'm going to get rid of all the fluffy bits, the flu at the end. And then I'm left with this here. And... I'm going to take about 20 or so barbules and I'm going to pull them out from the center of the feather and I'm just going to grip them and give them a pull and they should just come away quite easily and I'm going to use the natural curve of them so that they're pointing up um, I don't want it too short don't want it too long so I'm just going to put in a locking turn just to hold it and a second and then I'm just going to position and just check that I'm happy with the length of those. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. And then I can continue down and then remove this waist section just by here. There we go. And then tidy up and then continue back around across the lead down to the down to the bend of the hook and I'm just going to take this opportunity to reposition my fly there we go and I'm going to repeat the operation with the other side of my partridge feathers so I need about 20 so I'll use the same amount that I took from the other side so they match up pretty well Sometimes you let go of them. Um, just got to take your time. Don't rush. And just pull. Off they come. And just got to get that natural curve. Doesn't matter if they splay out a little bit. And then I'm just going to hold them onto the side of the hook. And use the natural roll of my tying silk, my tying thread, just to bring them 
round onto the top and that's a little bit long for me don't know if you can see that it's a little bit long um, i don't want it longer than the front so i'm just going to pull them very gently without them twisting that's why i haven't put too many wraps on yet and there we go right so just give that a couple of turns there we have it and i'm just going to tidy up come in with my scissors and just nip off that section there and we can do a bit of a tidy up at this bottom end and just sort of taper it so that I don't get a step where the lead meets my tying thread. Right, so next bit, I'm going to put the shrimp shell back in. Um, I'm going to use some of this magic shrimp foil that I picked up the other day. Uh, Czechoslovakian. Um, quite like it because it's quite stretchy, but also it comes in these pre-cut little sections so I don't have to mess around too much and one side is very shiny and one side is very matte um, so I'm going to go for the shiny side up um, and to tie this in I'm just going to come in and I'm going to cut a little v-shape at the end to help me with tying it in because I want the shiny side facing upwards I'm going to tie it in facing down so that when I pull it across it's in exactly the right position and then I'm going to come in and I'm just going to hold and pinch it over the back and then with the pinch turn I'm going to secure it down I'm going to put a locking turn in and then I'm just going to adjust and check that it's in the position that I want it to be in now don't worry about all this bit here because you're going to cover over all of that um, so I'm just going to come down like so and then use my tying thread just to tidy all this up like that now this is where I now I'm going to put my hook back take that opportunity to return it with, and you can see that it's all starting to take shape now I'm going to take my tying thread halfway back up the body and I'm going to form about a 15 centimeter long almost dubbing loop so to speak and just tie that in because this is going to form a pre-rib and again I am just going to tie that away out of the way and then for my second rib my second rib um, I'm going to use some uh, I'm going to use, if I can find it, it's here somewhere, um, I'm going to use a little bit of, a um, little bit of mono, oh there it is, it's hiding, a little bit of mono, a little bit of copolymer that I've taken off an old spool, um, this is uh, 3x, um, there it is, um, and to aid this one I need to flatten out the end, I don't want to tie it in, in that rounded section, so I'm just going to nibble about a centimetre, with my front teeth could use a pair of pliers or forceps to do this and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tie this in so it's got a flat profile and I'm going to continue and bring my tying thread back to the base of the fly and I'm going to come all the way back up and just tie everything in so it's all flat and nothing's sticking out there you go so I've now got two ribs ready to go. There you go. I'll just get that out of the way. Now I'm going to dub the main part of the body. Now I'm going to use some uh, Nature Spirit Snowshoe Rabbit foot dubbing in muskrat grey. Um, the reason for that is because it's been in my box for ages and I decided that it needed to be used for something. Um, you could mix it with a little bit of pink um, with, with other colours um, as well. Uh, but I quite like the effect that this gives. Um, it's quite spiky, um, but very, very, very soft. Now I'm going to put a dubbing rope on. There we go, it's my dubbing rope. And at this end, I'm going to keep it quite slim. But as I move up into the centre of my fly, I'm going to overdub a little bit because I want the middle bit to be quite, quite bulky compared to the front and the back. So... 
there we go and just gonna I'm not taking too much um, time out to just um, tighten up my dubbing um, noodle um, or make it look really special at this point because that comes in a bit as we get down towards the front okay we've now got just a little bit more there i think we've now got quite a a chunky looking shrimp type shape and I'll just there we go put another turn there turn you see that i'm just pushing it down with my fingers just to make sure that all the fibers are where i'd like them to be rather than rather than just leaving them flay out all over the place I'm just going to give it a bit of a rub and a push down on the sides because I want all those fibres to be coming out down the bottom as much as possible. If I've got too many sticking out the top, I've got a couple there, I'm just going to give her a little haircut. Don't be worried about doing this. I've got very sharp scissors here. I might just give a little trim just down the sides as well. Because when I'm putting resin on a little bit later on, um, those little fibers there they really do get in the way and uh, and it spoils the look of the fly and you'll get very frustrated with it um, so better to deal with them now than deal with them later on so there we go we got that in place so now i'm going to take my uh, shrimp foil and very carefully i'm going to stretch it over the top of my fly of the shrimp because it's stretchy, I can make it quite uh, quite wide or quite thin just by a pull. So I'm just going to make give it a little pull. So I don't want it too wide. And then I'm just going to loop over my tying thread and loop over again. And then just have a little check. And just check that it's in the position that I want it to be in. It's all looking particularly good. And then I'm going to put in one, two more turns. It's always good to do that with the stretchy um, materials because they do tend to ping back and suddenly they've gone from underneath your tying thread. So just remove those and then just tidy up a little bit here. Now you're going to do most of the tidying in a minute, but that's all good. So we're at this stage where it's definitely looking like a shrimp now. Now this is where my double ribbing comes in. Um, because this is going to give me a bit of colour, but also a bit of strength. So the first rib is going to be the thread, um, the doubled up thread that we uh, put in earlier. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in and across the back, I'm going to go up, across, not too much pressure yet. But when I come to the other side, that's where I'm going to pull down. If I pull down too quickly and too early, I find that my um, shrimp back can often slip to one side. So, and I'm going to keep these segments fairly close together at this point and give it a pull. And then I'm just going to make them wider as I move up the shrimp back until I get to the front. And then I can tie off. There we go. Lock and turn in. Let's give it another one. Just to play safe. Now, sometimes at this point, um, particularly with um, scud hooks and grub hooks, um, sometimes it is worth at this point just putting in um, a little one turn whip finish just to secure it because they do have a tendency to flick off the front when you're playing around with all the other materials. Um, so, what I'm then going to do is going to take my 3x mono um, and i'm going to follow exactly the same path for the rib so we've got one two three Ooh, make sure it follows the same line four and five and then we're back at the front of um, our shrimp. I'm going to bring my tying thread up and I'm going to put one, 
two initial locking turns and another one another two just in front and then I'm gonna come in and just remove that tag end so you can see you definitely got a shrimp starting to appear here so now I can tidy up the head so I'm just gonna build up my head from the right from the front give it a nice taper it might not look perfect yet but we are going to put some resin on here so it will actually taper it all in and at this point you can now whip finish one two three four and come in with a little blade and just flick that off and there we have our shrimp now you could just leave it like that if you wanted to um, but I'm going to do a couple of other things with this now um, the first one is I'm going to take my um, my homemade dubbing brush a bit of velcro on a lolly stick and I'm just going to come in and I'm just going to agitate the fibers underneath just very gently so I'm not breaking anything and give them a pull forward and you should start to see the legs of the shrimp starting to develop particularly if you pull them down like so so if i put it like that you can see it's looking far more shrimpy now and just going to remove those now i've got quite a few fibers across the top i'm going to come in with my scissors just rotate my fly trim those down one there that's going to cause me a problem because so when I put resin on here that resin is going to going to use that as a guise and you end up looking like you've got a great big flagpole sticking up and you'll get frustrated with it um, so best to get in and give it a really good trim what I'm then going to do is turn my shrimp upside down make sure I've got these fibers where I want them I'm going to come in at 45 degrees from the from the eye to the hook point and I'm just going to trim the legs there we go so that they're tapered down still got a few there now oh, that should do that should do now the next stage um, I'm going to use um, a marker pen so there's my marker um, it's a Windsor and Newton pro marker um, it's uh, rose pink um, and the good thing about these markers um, is that they've got a, um, a bullet point as well as a chisel point. Um, I'm going to use the chisel point for this because I get a better build-up of colour. But the bullet point is really good for tiny little sections. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to dab this on. I don't want a, a really strong pink colour. What I want is a gradual build-up of colour that gives it sort of a... Turkish Delight Pink, the way I like to think about it. Um, and I'm just going to colour those in. Now, if I leave it like this, all that will fade and come off over time. So, what I like to do with my shrimps to also protect them is I like to give them a coating of um, of UV resin. Now, this, the UV resin I'm using here um, is uh, is Golf Classic. Um, thin man would be good, um, but I do quite, I do like this. It, it, it really is clear, and it and it does um, harden really quickly under the UV under UV light. So um, what I'm going to do is take a little piece, little bit. I'm going to add it onto the, the tip of a needle. It gives me more control. There it is. So I haven't actually put it directly onto the fly yet. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply it. To the top of the fly and work it around now a little bit goes a long way so take your time and i'm going to come over the over the head and start to build that up into the shrimp profile and if you need a little bit more this is where the control comes in it's always worth having. Ooh, it's always worth having um, a little 
piece of kitchen roll or something with you that you can just get rid of some as well. I'm just going to add a bit more on. You just keep keep going until you're absolutely satisfied. Um, at this point, you can still take some off. Just clean your needle off and just give it a little brush over and just remove some of that resin. Okay, so there we go. Then I'm going to come in with my torch and give it a blast. It'll move around and it'll harden really quickly. There we go. Now, I like to have my shrimps just with a little bit more of a pronounced section. So I'm just going to take another little bit of bit of resin. There we go. I'm just going to build the raised front section with a second layer of resin. I love working with resin because it gives you this opportunity to build up multiple layers if you want to. Um, or only put one layer in if you really want to. Make sure there's no bubbles in it. As occasionally you get the odd bubble. Bring it down. Looking good. And I'm going to give it a blast. There we go. Make sure I put the lid back on the UV resin. Put that just out of the way. And then the final piece, and I don't really need to do this, but I always have done, is I just take my Sally Hansen hard as nails and I just give it a little wipe over with some Sally Hansen just to give it that extra shockproof, bulletproof section. And there we have it. That's the Lost Lake Fly Itching Shrimp. Um, you could do them in lots of different colours. Um, really effective in really small sizes, particularly in the river. Um, and it, definitely if you put the tungsten um, shrimp back on it and glue that in, you can get a really, really, really heavy depth charged um, scud that will actually hit the bottom. Um, and you can bounce it um, and wait for the wait for the grayling or the trout, depending on what season it is, to pick that up from the bottom. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that. Don't forget you can download the uh, step-by-steps as well um, in a PDF form from our website, www.lostlakefly.co.uk, included within our digital vault. Um, and you, you can watch these videos as well. Um, hope you enjoyed that. Give it a go. Love to see what you do. Thanks a lot.